I'm delighted to be here with you uh, this morning. You know, it's, it's been, a, been a really long week, a busy week, and I, I, I was thinking, um, you know, it's great, it's, you know, it's Friday. Thank, thank a union that it's Friday. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I have, uh, I'm in, in this awkward period where I have glasses that are transition glasses for distance and, and reading, and I haven't quite become accustomed to them, but I w walked into uh, a legion a while ago. Of course, Remembrance Day was recently, and uh, I visited nine legions in my riding on Remembrance Day, and I walked into the legion in Mount Juniac later in the afternoon, and there were some people who had been sitting there for a while, I think, there's four ladies sitting at a table. They were ladies of a certain age, and they had been there for a certain period of time, and I discerned that based on the fact that there were three empty beer pitchers in front of them. <laughs> and uh, when I walked over to the table, one of them said to me, Mr. Bryson, I've never seen you with your glasses on before. She said, I hate them. <laughs> she said, she said, they look terrible on you. <laughs> and uh, so I didn't know what to say. And she said, take them off. So I, I took them off. And she said, without your glasses, you look 20 years younger. <laughs> I, I looked at her and I said, without my glasses, you look 20 years younger too. <laughs> she said, they have, thank you. So. There's about three years before an election. We'll see how I do in Mount Juniac next time. <laughs> um, I, uh, I am uh, delighted uh, to be here with you today, and uh, I'm proud uh, to have the opportunity to work as closely as I do with our public service. I've uh, had about almost 20 years now as a member of parliament, and two times as a, as a, as a minister. And, uh, uh, I am, continue to be impressed with the professionalism and the dedication and the commitment of our public servants. And, and what, I, what I reflect on is that public servants, you, you are, are drawn to public service and have been drawn to public service for the, the same reasons that I am drawn to politics and public service, and that is to make a difference. Uh, and we have the opportunity, we're privileged in many ways, to have the opportunity to make a difference in the lives of Canadians on an ongoing basis. Um, our public servants are dedicated citizens who ensure the safety of our food and consumer products, provide weather forecasting to millions of Canadians every day, help us fight climate change, protect our environment, safeguard our national security, manage our forests and fisheries, administer our tax laws and benefits, including our new Canada Child Benefit, which will lift over 300,000 Canadian kids out of poverty. Les, les employés de la fonction... The employees of the, of the public service, they're a positive change in our country. And the work they do is essential for the prosperity, economic prosperity, social and cultural prosperity of Canada. The unions are also a positive force in this country. They have fought to get a lot of the benefits that all Canadian workers take for granted. Among those are minimum wages, the five-day work week, parental leave, as well as health and safety regulations for workers. PIPS has been a strong advocate and champion for its members throughout its history that goes back nearly 100 years. When the system works and when we have a fair and balanced approach to labour relations, Canadian workers benefit and Canadian citizens benefit. That is why unions and employers must be on an equal footing when it comes to negotiating wages and other important issues that make up our modern workplace. And that's why our government and our Prime Minister made a commitment and are working to fulfill that commitment from the first day in office to restore a culture of respect and good faith for our public service. 
We've moved to repeal unfair anti-union laws. For example, we've... We've introduced legislation to repeal the powers introduced in Bill C-59, which would uh, have allowed the government, of course, to unilaterally impose a, a short-term disability on the plan on the public service without any negotiation, just uh, unilaterally do it in a Budget Implementation Act, in fact. We repealed the last government's Bill C-377 and C-525. Um, we've restored fairness and balance to our Canada's labour system broadly, not just within our labour relations with the public service, but broadly. Cela demande not and demonstrates our undertaking to re-establish a culture of respect towards the public service, and I can I can assure you that this is not the empty words, we are ready to follow up to, with concrete measures. Co approach to evidence-based decision-making and scientific discovery. I was pleased last week to participate in the launch of our $1.5 billion National Oceans Protection Plan. With this plan, we're creating a world-leading marine safety system that is built on Canadian science and community engagement, including partnership with Indigenous peoples. We have taken steps to ensure that government scientists are going to be more central to our government's decision making and that they can speak freely of their work. In short, we've brought back evidence-based decision-making and have replaced decision-based evidence-making. As clarified in our new communications policy, subject matter experts, including scientists, can now speak publicly about their work without needing to be designated. These are just a few of examples. Uh, that reflect the respect we have and the understanding we have of the important work done by public servants. In short, we, we were elected as a government uh, with a strong mandate to implement a, a progressive agenda for Canadians. But we can't get that done without the full engagement and partnership of our public service. As we know, we're in the midst of an important round of collective bargaining. Uh, no less than 27 collective agreements are up for renewal with 15 bargaining groups or agents uh, within the public service. Uh, we're committed, um, as you are committed, to reaching agreements that are fair and reasonable. And, and, and let me be clear, as the employer, we're not always going to agree with your bargaining agents on every single issue. And sometimes uh, you will change our minds, and sometimes maybe we'll change your minds, and sometimes we'll work together to develop new ideas to approach issues, and where we can work together to actually innovate and come, to get, come together around ideas that can address some of these contentious issues. But you know, even when we disagree on some point, we can disagree without being disagreeable. And what I guarantee you from our government is we will always be respectful because we understand the value of our public service and the value of PIPs and the organizations representing our public servants. We will negotiate in good faith and we will engage in a spirit of open dialogue, collaboration and respect and we'll come together to build a stronger public service and a better Canada. I'm committed to respecting the collective bargaining process and the independence of these negotiations. I enjoy working with Debbie and Pips, and I enjoy working, in fact, with, uh, uh, the, with uh, Robin and, and PSAC. And the, in fact, I enjoy working with our groups uh, uh, very much. 
I phoned, uh, I think it was a couple days after I was sworn in, I phoned um, uh, Debbie on her, on her cell phone. I thought she, I think she, she thought it was a prank call. <laughs> I don't think she'd ever had a president of the Treasury Board calling her proactively before. In fact, when I, when I went into my office that day, it was uh, the previous fellow who was there, he had a to-do list, Debbie, and I just don't, I, just to make sure you didn't, to, he didn't hurt your feelings, it was, it was on there somewhere on that to-do list to call Debbie Davio, but it, he never got to it. Um, <laughs> I said, I'm not going to make that mistake. I'm not going to make that mistake. I want to talk to you a little bit about building uh, the high-performance public service of, of the future. Uh, this is, a, this is, is, is really uh, important because um, we need to do more to attract particularly young people to the public service, and, and th those young people can benefit from the mentorship of people in this room. Uh, we need to get this right. There's a lot at stake. Um, as I said, we've, we've got a, a progressive and an ambitious agenda as a government, and we need you as partners, as part of a motivated, engaged, and, and respected public service to get that job done. We're starting from a, a solid foundation. Uh, I really believe that. And the most recent employee survey from 2014 clearly demonstrated that employee engagement is 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 high and and is is strong. 93% uh, of employees that they're they they are willing to on an ongoing basis put in extra effort to get the get the job done. But you don't need a survey to understand that. Um, I deal with public servants on an ongoing basis, and you you know the people are, want to make a difference. They want to get a. Uh, they want to drive positive results. Our results and delivery agenda as a government, I think, is going to actually be something that we're in. We're going to enable not just ministers, um, uh, but all public servants to actually see the results of, of our work and to understand the impacts of our work. Um, employee engagement is, is critical. It's absolutely fundamental. Uh, to a successful working environment. And an engaged workforce is going to be more productive and effective in terms of achieving our objectives, not just as a government, but as, as citizens. Um, we're going to be better at keeping up with emerging trends and the evolving expectations of citizens. Beyond that, we're, we're living in a day and age when the rapidity of change faced by governments or any organizations uh, is, is greater than it's ever been in our history. So, so we need to, every organization needs to up its game, including government, including cabinets. Uh, we need to be able to anticipate change and develop creative and important public policy to deal with that change, and then, of course, implement that public policy. And the cycles within which we're going to have to do that will only hasten over time. Uh, so. The, the hallmark of a high-performing workforce is going to be agility and the ability to anticipate and, 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 and to see ahead and to, to predict to, to the extent that is possible these changes and to adapt. As president of the Treasury Board, it's, it's both my responsibility but also my, my privilege uh, to be able to work in partnership with you, our public service, to deliver the kind of of, of change and public service that, that Canadians deserve. I mentioned earlier the issue of recruitment. Um, and and I, I really believe that we have a, a tremendous opportunity to attract millennials to, to the public service. Uh, millennials, um, are, have, from a values perspective, want to make a difference. And, and it's not just a job, they, 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 they want to make, it's more than just making a living, they want to make, it, make a difference. And I, I think we have an opportunity to give them an op a, a, the, the chance to paint on a larger canvas and to really make a difference and a positive difference in the lives of, of Canadians. I want us to do a better job of reaching out to the best and brightest young Canadians and attracting them to uh, the public service. Um, and again, the, some of the people in this room are important to help mentor and develop uh, that next generation 
of public servants. Um, to reach out to a lot of, of Canadians and to attract them to the public service, we've recently created the Proudly Serving Canadians website. And this site is helping us brand the public service as the dynamic organization it is where employees can make the best use of their skills, knowledge, and experience. It also supports recruitment and retention by showcasing the important work we do and the wide range of career opportunities available. I also believe that in addition to the marketing part of it and a website that promotes it, we have to change some, the way we do things within government, including making things less hierarchical in terms of decision making and enabling public servants to, to develop ideas and cross-pollinate ideas across departments and agencies, even within departments. There's too many silos, to be honest. And the ability for us to creatively share ideas and co-develop solutions um, is not developed to the extent it could be, and we need to do a better job of that. One of the pilot programs I, I'm, I'm, I'm most proud of and, and want to expand on is our pilot program with the Assembly of First Nations. It supports and places Indigenous post-secondary students from across Canada in meaningful summer jobs in a variety of departments and agencies here in the National Capital Region. I had the opportunity to meet uh, some of these students last summer and I was inspired. I'm very pleased uh, with the work uh, we're doing as well. I've uh, been doing to launch new and innovative recruitment campaigns, but I, I want to do more of it. Uh, but again, that doesn't obviate the need we have to actually change how we work within the public service. And I, I want your ideas on how to do that and, and to enable a more creative and innovative uh, ability to share ideas and develop solutions. Je tiens à ajouter. I want to add that a larger diversity and inclusion does not consist only to build a public service of worldwide caliber is this as a symbol of our Canadian identity. It is the greatest force. As our Prime Minister uh, has said, and I quote, our commitment to diversity and inclusion isn't about Canadians being nice and polite, though of course we are. In fact, this commitment is a powerful and ambitious approach to making Canada and the world a better and safer place. Today, the public service is already um, surpassing workforce availability in all four employment equity groups. There are many great things being done to support diversity and inclusion across the public service, but we have work to do. There are challenges that remain. We must and we can do more because pursuing diversity is absolutely es essential so that Canadians can see in their public service a reflection of the diversity of our country. It can also help us attract and retain talented people needed to build the kinds of results Canadians deserve. It can help preserve core public service values fairness, transparency, impartiality, and respect. And it can improve the quality of our public services because you have a better understanding of the services Canadians need if the people delivering those services actually reflect uh, the, the broader Canadian uh, 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 society. And it does this by improving dialogue and communication with our wider population. Diversity contributes to social mobility. It enhances the employability of, of what currently disadvantaged groups. It's an imperative that no employer can ignore. And I want to say on this, if I may, in the months leading up to the last election, uh, when we had a platform, um, when the Prime Minister launched our platform, and we, he committed to a gender-balanced cabinet. I was uh, surprised at some of the commentary I read in uh, Canadian newspapers. Uh, and some of the commentators questioned whether uh, prime, a prime minister would be able to have a gender-balanced cabinet, whether this was somehow a, 
a watering down of meritocracy if we had a gender balanced cabinet. I can tell you um, I am proud to serve in Canada's first gender balanced cabinet. And we have exceptional uh, women in our cabinet. And not just do we have exceptional women in our cabinet, we have enough exceptional women in our caucus, we could have 100% women cabinet if, we, if the Prime Minister chose to. Well, I'm, I'm not, I mean, I'm, I think I'm doing a pretty good job, Prime Minister, you don't have to, but, but the, the point is, the point is that um, what the Prime Minister did in terms of gender balance within our cabinet is already creating a ripple effect within corporate boardrooms across Canada. People are talking about it and they're looking around those boardrooms and they're saying, you know, if the Prime Minister can do it with his cabinet, why can't we do that in this boardroom? We're doing it in terms of the boards we're appointing, it, we're doing it in terms of our approach broadly, but this is really important and it's again an example of government leadership and the important difference it can make. So I, uh, throughout my work, I, I reach out on an ongoing basis to important stakeholders, including PIPs, to explore new approaches to diversity. And I want to acknowledge the wonderful collaboration we've had so far. It's a great example of how we can make a difference working hand in hand. Um, and I, I can tell you, and I, I don't want to scoop an announcement that's coming up, but we will have some very exciting announcements in the near future on initiatives, uh, one in particular, uh, which I believe is going to be a game changer in terms of diversity uh, within Canada's public service. I want to also speak to you about the partnership we've had uh, with public servants and, and, uh, the, and, and, and PIPs and PSAC and the Joint Council on um, mental health. Uh, today, mental illness has cost the Canadian economy about $51 billion per year, with approximately $21 billion directly related to workplace losses. In the public service, approximately half of all disability claims are related to mental health. The situation is, is unacceptable. Uh, we already have a number of tools and services in place to support employee health and well-being in the workplace. Uh, with health care benefits and health and safety legislation, but as the Joint Task Force on Mental Health clearly demonstrated, we need to do a lot more. And this is exactly what we've committed to doing with our new workplace mental health strategy released last summer. Uh, we're focusing on three main issues. First, we want to change the culture in the public service to ensure employees feel free to raise concerns and seek help when they need it. We need to take mental health issues out of the closet. Second, we need to build capacity, which is about providing the right training and tools to staff and managers to promote mental health awareness and to address these issues. And third, we need to do a better job of measuring progress, as well as taking the pulse, pulse of our organizations and our workforce on an ongoing basis. This is a bold direction uh, we're heading in to build a healthy, respectful, and supportive work environment. I've spoken of you know, a couple areas where we may be ahead of the private sector in some ways. This is an area where I, I, I gotta say there are companies in the private sector who are ahead of us in terms of addressing mental health issues and, and, and I want government to lead when it comes to mental health within the workforce. I want us to, to be the standard bearer in terms of, of mental health in the workforce as a government. And I know PIPS and its members uh, will be a partner in progress as we move forward on this. I, I want to thank all the public servants who gave us feedback during the consultations on um, uh, the mental health strategy. Uh, we're now working hard at revising our strategy and identifying next steps. And to make sure that we have all the right in elements in place we will make sure to reach out to all stakeholders, including bargaining agents. Our government is committed to a public service um, where that is free of harassment, and to that end, my officials have established an interdepartmental working group and will be developing a strategy from those discussions. 
Um, and we look forward to engaging bargaining agents in the process to ensure that the public service remains and becomes a more a respectful and welcoming workplace. I want to talk to you just about the, 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 the situation, the problems with the Phoenix pay system. <laughs> I got, I, you know, it just seems pretty basic to me that there's sort of an employer-employee relationship that the employee works and the employer pays them. Um, <laughs> Um, but um, the, the situation is, is completely uh, unacceptable. I'm speaking uh, on behalf of our government, on behalf of our Prime Minister, on behalf of Minister Foote, my colleague, and uh, Minister of Public Services and Procurement Canada. And um, we are, I, 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 look, we're, we're frustrated, we're working hard to fix it. We've expanded resources and increased resources to do that and bringing more people on and establishing uh, satellite uh, centers to deal with it. It is totally unacceptable and we're committed to fixing it. But it is also a lesson to us in terms of enterprise-wide IT uh, solutions. And we are when you have a crisis like this and you have a screw-up like this, uh, it is an opportunity to learn. And this, we did inherit a situation from the previous government in terms of, of Phoenix. It was started in 2012. And we take our responsibility as a government, because we're the government now, so we take our responsibility uh, seriously to fix it. But one of the things going forward, when we're implementing an IT uh, solution, I want us to make sure we maintain legacy parallel or legacy systems and, and parallel systems until we are absolutely certain that the new system is working. And, And I understand the motivation why another government may have not wanted to do that because they, they, they viewed it as an opportunity to save some money, right? And, and, and the problem with that idea is that you end up spending a lot more in the long run because IT s solutions, and whether you're in the private sector or government, enterprise-wide IT solutions are all, always fraught with challenges. Um, but you, you need to maintain a strong legacy system in place until you're certain that the new one is, is working. And as we move forward, there's another lesson in this too. Um, there's a lot of collective wisdom and individual wisdom within the public service when it comes to IT. And uh, uh, we want to build on that, and we want to strengthen our internal capacity to develop and implement IT solutions within the government of Canada. And I've looked at some other countries and what they've done in, in the last while and the government digital services models in countries like, like the UK and Australia and 18F, uh, uh, which was done, uh, not to be confused with F-18s, um, but 18F in um, uh, Washington in the Obama administration. Um, there's some innovative approaches to developing uh, IT capacity within government, and I'm, I'm, I'm very um, enthusiastic about what has been done in, in other countries. I want to learn from that and build on the collective wisdom of our uh, IT uh, groups within the government of Canada. I want to thank you um, uh, as, as citizens, uh, as, as public servants, uh, for your work and your commitment. Uh, we've got um, a lot of challenges uh, ahead of us. Um, 
on, you know, in closing on the Phoenix system, um, I want to thank, you know, there's been a good work done in the Union Management Joint Committee, and, and we will fix this, but just again, we've, we have learned uh, from this, and this experience uh, will inform, I, I would hope, uh, better approach processes that will render better results in the future. And I appreciate very much your partnership in helping us fix this uh, and move forward. Um, I look forward to continuing uh, our deep partnership with you to build the public service of the future. We're starting at a good foundation, I believe. Um, um, I was proud to see my own Department Treasury Board named one of Canada's top 100 employers for 2017, recognized for its outstanding achievements in a number of areas, including innovative workplace, work atmosphere, benefits package, training, and community involvement. Um, our shared challenge um, broadly across our public services to ensure that our public service continues to be and a model employer. And I pledge to you that our government will consider all your views and ideas as we do that. Every idea uh, you present to me um, and to our team will help inform the decisions we make. As, and as representatives of, of labor, uh, PIPS has been uh, vocal about making sure the interests and concerns of you as members are heard. And I want to thank you for the ideas and feedback you've provided, particularly over the last several months. We value your input and your contribution, uh, and it goes well beyond the traditional issues of wages or compensation, but on all aspects of public service. And um, I uh, want to thank you uh, again um, uh, for, well, it's been about a year since I've had the privilege of uh, uh, being president of the Treasury Board. And during that period of time, um, uh, I've been able to deepen my relationships with uh, the leaders of, of, of Canada's public service uh, unions, uh, but also with, with members. And uh, I am proud of our public service. We have uh, an exceptional public service in Canada. And I uh, am, in my 20 years of, uh, in, in, in politics, I've never been as excited as I am right now about the potential we have together uh, to build an even better Canada. So I thank you very much for the opportunity uh, to share some time with you this morning. And I look forward to getting together with you uh, again uh, in, in the future and to, uh, to uh, the coming months and, and years, which I think are an exciting time. Um, when you look at what's happening in other places around the world, uh, not too far in fact, uh, I think uh, uh, we can be proud of our country and its diversity. We can be proud of this multicultural miracle we have here in Canada, but we should never be smug. And we should recognize we're a lucky country, but we should never take that luck for granted. And we, we need to work hard to preserve our good fortune as a country, not just for our generation, but for future generations of Canadians and for a world that now more than ever needs more Canada. Thank you very much.